Dr. Crystal Brimer from Wilmington, North Carolina. I have a solo private practice and dry eye center there. And to tell you a little bit about myself, I have basically allowed dry eye to consume most of my days and nights over the past several years with co-creating the Vision Source Dry Eye Protocol and helping design the, the new platform for the Oculus 5M. And now I've founded the Dry Eye Institute in Wilmington. And I did this because I, I wanted to create this small group environment to help equip doctors with all the resources they needed to expand dry eye in their practice. And more importantly, to create an individualized plan for their practice. Because this is my passion, to inspire and empower doctors to take better care of their patients. I lecture and consult for a handful of companies. My goal for today is to talk about the motivation and the challenges behind treating dry eye, review some screening options, and then show you what to look for at the slit lamp, how to interpret it and pair it with purposeful treatments, how to explain it to patients, and then what to consider when it comes to staff and flow and ROI. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. And I'm gonna try to do it in 50 minutes or less. And why is it so hard? Because a lot of times they're self-medicating. They're using tears constantly. They're in denial that there's a real problem and, or they think that the tears will actually make it go away. And this is potentially a habit that's perpetuated by doctors as well. Now, when we do go above and beyond and we try to implement a treatment for them, a lot of times there's a lack of compliance. And because we didn't give them that silver bullet that fixed everything, they're gonna move on to the next doctor and the next doctor and the next. Then when we get them, there is um, it, multiple simultaneous underlying causes at play. This is creating a very complex presentation. So you might have four patients with the same symptoms and you give them all the same treatment and it works in one of them. Maybe. <laughs> and the reason is because the underlying issues are different between these. Now, in the same respect, you could have the same underlying issue, but yet in four different patients, they have four different sets of complaints. So it becomes very complex the longer they have it. Then it creates this scenario of a trial and error approach, which it causes a lot of frustration for the patient and the doctor, especially when it leads to extended chair time. It's hard, so why bother? The reality is our profession has more competition than it ever has before. You know, there's a lot of books written out there about differentiation, and it's for a reason. When you choose to focus differently and practice differently, you're going to rise above that competition, and it's not going to be a threat to you. You can't be everything to everyone, so focus on what you're passionate about, expand your skills in that area, and then market yourself, set yourself apart, and charge accordingly. One of the reasons I love treating dry eye as much as I do is because I realize the impact I can have on their long-term outcome for years and years to come. You have the power to determine their outcomes because it matters when you intervene at year one instead of two and two instead of three and three instead of six. And you can do that by screening patients every year and, and, and finding it quicker. When you do that, you're practicing preventative care instead of reactive care, and you're changing their long-term success. You're establishing a foundation within the practice and really creating a mindset in the patient base. And don't think that by doing that, you're gonna suffer financially. You will not. If you focus on the outcomes, you take care of those patients, you intervene early, you can create a, a huge profit center that will rival or exceed a routine practice any day of the week. How do you do it? By screening your patients. Your success will start here, but more importantly, their success starts here. This is how you change their outcomes, by screening patients, every patient, every year. What's really important about this is helping your staff understand the value in it and creating a, a an environment where there aren't exceptions, where they realize that it's important enough that they need to do it on every patient every time. There are a lot of options when it comes to screening. In my, my own office, I started with something really simple. 
early, early on, we had a laminated piece of paper with these questions on it, and she would just show it to the patient after she did AR and Optimap and say, would you say yes to any of these questions? Now, let me tell you, we've come a long, long way from there, and we've developed a, a much more sophisticated screening process. I use the Oculus 5M now, and I'll do tear meniscusite, non-invasive tear breakup time, and redness. And I do this for a couple reasons. I do it because I want a glimpse, it's just a snapshot of how they're doing when it comes to water, oil, and inflammation. And in my mind, this is a, a pretty quick way to, to give me that snapshot. Then the patient gets this report and it categorizes their um, severity in each of those categories. What I love about this particular method is when I walk in the exam room, the collage is up on the screen, but the patient's sitting there with the report in their hand. And so this creates a scenario of they're asking me for something. And that's what you always want, whether you're selling AR coatings or transitions or whatever your focus is in the office, you want that seed to be planted so many times that when you walk in the door, they're asking you for it versus the other way around. And if they don't have issues at this time, then at least it plants that seed that this is where they, sh they would go, that we have an office full of, of the latest technology and we can take care of whatever their needs are. Now, when you're choosing a screening method, Think about how it influences your patient's perception. So what I mean by that is if your screening method is a survey, and let's say that you do your slit lamp, you have some findings, you discuss it with the patient, and you say, okay, Mrs. Jones, I really think you should do this, this, and this, she might say, eh, you know what, it's not that bad, and go on about her day. Why? Because potentially she thought that everything you said was based on what she reported to you and what she told you her symptoms were. That's why I've really moved away from surveys and questionnaires because I want this to be based on my findings. So that's why I really like the report because it's not about how they feel today or how they felt last week or whether or not they can tolerate it. It's about the condition of their ocular surface. So think about that when you're choosing your screening method. When it comes to the slit lamp exam, my slit lamp exam is the same every single time. I start with the lashes, I have the patient look down, evaluate the lashes, go to the lid margin, and then I move on to the tear film, the cornea, the conjunctiva, and then evaluate the meibomian glands. So no matter what that patient's there for, my scribe hears me say the same thing every single time. Look down. <laughs> and we start there and we go around that circle. What am I looking for? When it comes to the lid, I'm looking at the structure. Is there notching, scalloping, uh, entropion, ectropion, dermatochalasis? Is there staining, telangiectasia, hyperemia, edema, debris, uh, mites, cholerets? What's there? All of that influences my tear film, which then influences my ocular surface. Here's a good example of just line of mark staining on the bottom picture and then lid wiper epitheliopathy on the top. I'm looking for telangiectasia, hyperemia.